Hey guys, I promised you some tutorials before, and uh, this is what we're starting with here. Um, I've got three planned, <coughs> excuse me, and they're not professional at all. I'm not going to try to do retakes and stuff, except for this retake, because I've already line arted this one, but I forgot to have my microphone on, so I'm going to do it again, instead of recording over the video that I've already got recorded. But, anyways, the plan three videos are this one being uh, uh, doing your line art with the line tool in Flash, and then the next one's going to be um, doing your line art with the brush tool in Flash, and then the third one's going to be coloring in Flash. Um, there's nothing uh, super... Uh, I guess established about these things this is just the way that I do it and the way that I've come to learn how to do it. Um, the reason why I'm going to be doing the line tool today is because I come back to it every now and again when I want my lines to be super perfect as in the same line with all the way around the entire drawing. And I started doing this back when I first got into using Flash at like uh, Flash 5 I think it was back in probably 2002 I didn't have a tablet I only had my mouse and I had uh, a friend who had a scanner and I'd scan my sketches in and I'd go over my sketches in flash with the mouse using the line tool and it was the only way I could do digital art and then later on I did get a tablet and I started just ke I kept on drawing in flash and that's that's a question I get asked every now and again is why the hell do you use flash why don't you use Mega Studio why don't you use uh, uh, Photoshop or why don't you use um, uh, Psy and um, I like all those programs, it's just I've come really uh, to really like Flash and the way that I can manipulate my lines, both with the line tool and with the brush tool. It's just working with these vectors is just something that I'm super used to. And actually using Photoshop is a little weird to me because of how um, pixelated things can get when you mess with it too much. Um, I'm fine with just cell shading and not painting. And that's just what I'm going to stick to. Gradients are about as good as I get with, you know, transitioning from one color to another, you know, kind of softly. But, um, I do use Photoshop, but mostly it's just to crop images or to do some layer styles that I can't do in Flash, like soft lighting. Um, because now you can do, um, things like uh, a multiply and um, hard light and screen and stuff like that and you can add some types of filters like a type of blur or glow and things like that but for the most part most of the drawing happens in flash for me nowadays um, but anyways here's a here's a sketch that I worked on last week when I was doing my draw every day uh, sketches and stuff and this is what we're gonna use to do our uh, line tool sketch so, just jumping right on into it, um, I select the sketch, modify, convert to symbol, that's F8, or you can use the little menus like I did, and I'm going to leave it on the movie clip or whatever it said, and then here in the properties you can go down to style under color effect, and let's click alpha, and you can change the, tra the transparency of it, the opacity. Um, just like you would uh, like if you're sketching in Photoshop It's the same thing as going to the layer and then just bringing down the opacity only you can't bring down the opacity in a layer You have to do it this way See, There's a lot of workarounds you can do in flash that you can do in Photoshop. It's just a different way of doing it So we're gonna lock the layer that way we don't accidentally get into this sketch and then we're gonna make a new layer over top of it and I'm just gonna do that the head um, I'm just gonna kind of kind of commentary over the head over the head and then that should cover all the bases and then the rest of it's just gonna be time-lapsed until we meet up again at the end so I'm gonna zoom in on to the head and on this first layer here I'm gonna change down here the two colors you got a fill color and a line color but I'm gonna take my line color and I'm gonna change it to red because that's gonna be the color that I use that I know that I'm working on this actual part these are the lines that I'm working on and when I get done with them I'll change the color and that color will be things that I'm not going to touch anymore because I, I, I get that asked the question you know that question asked every now and again too I'm going to change my fill color to transparent that way I can use this circle tool or the ellipse tool or polygon tool whatever you want to call it and I'm going to just start kind of doing the shapes that I can get with the circle tool first because I designed my characters where they're really simple and easy to draw and in turn since they got shapes in them I can use these shapes to do the line art so I'll pull an oval out and I'll use this transform tool to kinda make it line up with the with the sketch as best as I can 
And it's not just uh, uh, resizing, or it's not just you know pulling left and right. You can also skew it a little bit, and that can help get your lines filled in just right. But I've got my line weight or my my stroke uh, height set to three pixels. I think is what it goes by. Even though it's, I'm not using pixels, that's what it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be recognized as pixels. So that matches up with the cheek pretty good, and then there's, there's this forehead, it's got kind of a circle thing going on with it. So I'm going to pull a circle over here, and then I'm going to drag it over, and skew it, and then maybe stretch it? Stretch it side down. Pull this out, pull it back in. Okay, so it's got a pretty good shape. I'm going to kind of delete right here where it's going to overlap with the hair and then with this little sideburn part and then where they intersect is where it's going to stop your selection so we got our cheek and the forehead and um, next we need to work on I'm going to work on this little hair part here you don't want to get too much lines intersecting because when you do when you want to convert it over to a fill later it's gonna act a little weird. Uh, okay. Actually, let's go ahead and convert these to fills. So, if we select them and go to Modify, Shape, Convert Lines to Fills, they're not lines anymore. And uh, the way we can tell is, let me draw a line over here. So this is a line and these are fills. They look exactly the same because this used to be a line. Now with a line you can bend it. You can you can um, you can bend this thing and you can change its direction and stuff like that. But if you go over here these are shapes instead or fills. And when you try to pull these it's actually going to change the shape. Now you see the ends over here you can't change the ends because if you turn on this little outline Let's change it to black, it should be easy to see. When you turn on the outlines, you can see with the sketch off that this is a shape and I can I can change this shape. But even though this is the same width the way it looks, it's actually just a path. And this path won't change. You can change the style of this line, you can make the line thicker appearing to be thicker but it's not actually thicker it's always going to be the same and you can change the style to be like a dotted line or whatever but this is actually what we're wanting to use and the reason why is because you can edit this like if I wanted to just chop the end off and then I wanted to taper it down I can add a taper to it we can't do that with the line part of it but we use the line to actually get the shape anyways I want to keep this line I'm done with this I'm going to change the color to like a dark blue instead of a black because a dark blue gives your line art a little bit of a softer color. And I'm going to add a layer above it and I'm going to keep using uh, red as my line because I know that that's the lines that I'm working with. So here if we just start pulling anchor points around and we can bend these like this. And we can get the shape of uh, his, I guess they're bangs. And once we get this to where we want it, we can uh, actually, we're gonna leave this a little bit longer than the sketch wants it to be. We're gonna select it, modify shape, convert lines to fills. And up here at the top, it's rounded off. And I don't want it to be rounded off, I want it to be tapered down. So I'm gonna kinda select the tip of this and cut it off. And I'm gonna grab one end and pull it over to the other. What that does is adds a nice little taper. And I'm going to leave this tail over even though it goes over into the eye. The eye is going to be on top of this line so I'm going to just leave it there and I'll, I'll delete it later. later. So I'm going to leave the line red. I'm going to select it. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go to my line art li uh, layer and select it. And I'm going to paste it in place. Right click and you can see paste in place. You can click that or you can hold control shift and V. And what it does is it pastes it exactly where it was on the layer above. If you just hit paste, it'll put it anywhere, and then you're going to have to try to find out where it goes. It's not super important right now, but it saves you from having to line it up. But later on, paste in place is going to be really important. Now since these are two different colors, 
it kind of breaks it apart. Since there's red and then this dark blue, I can just click on this dark blue and it's going to select it and not select that whole line. That's why I left it red so I could separate it. Now I can select this red and turn it into dark blue. But now if I want to select it, it's going to select everything in this dark blue that's touching each other. So we got the shape of the face and the bangs. We're going to go ahead and it looks like we can use the circle tool on the big tuft of hair in the top. Just going to transform this bad boy down. Stretch it out. And you can see it's not a perfect circle. Like it's not going to use the circle perfectly. So we're going to have to do a little molding. When you get close to the line, you can see my, my pointer tool, the little box on the right will turn into like a curve, which means I can start pulling on this. If I just pull it straight out to my line art, there we go. Let's get rid of this part, and we'll just get rid of some of that up there. I'm going to get my line tool, and I'm going to start pulling from these points. Because I'm not going to need to make make those with circles. And just pull them apart. Like so. Delete this little tip off. And we've got these this little part in his head here. Which looks like it's just two circles. So we'll pull a couple of them bad boys out. A lot of it's just pulling a circle and then uh, using the transform tool. See if you got the if you've got the line selected, and then you put it over something else, you can still transform it, and it's not going to bother the line under it. It's when you let go of it when you deselect it. If you try to select it again, it's only going to select the parts that are in between these points. So now I can only affect this part. But as long as it's selected before you pull it over, it's gonna be fine. That's why that's why I like to make my circles over here. It doesn't matter if I make it like a big wonky circle or something. Because when I bring it over here, I'm just gonna transform it. Skew it a little bit. That should be fine. So I'm just gonna pull over here. This ear is gonna overlap it so I can leave this line long. I'll get these two inside lines. This is going to go up to the tuft of hair at the top. So we got the part in his hair too. Now I don't want to go any further really with this because of, like I said before, if I connect too many lines to this, when I convert it to a fill, it's going to, sometimes it'll delete part of the lines. It's just the way Flash converts these lines to these fills. And if it's too complicated, it'll really kind of choke on itself. Well, we can go ahead and get this uh, sideburn here since it's not connected to anything else. We'll pull straight down and up here. That's good enough. I'm going to pull these a little bit longer than uh, my sketch is because they need to be tapered down. If I shake convert lines to fill, you can set up shortcuts on here. You can set up a, sh uh, a keyboard shortcut to convert, convert lines to fills. It's just, I'm usually not using my keyboard a whole lot on the Surface Pro since it's usually just tucked underneath it. But you can use it. See, that's a little bit too harsh of a, of a taper. So you can, you can, well. Let's see. You can grab down here and kind of drag it up and it'll kind of nullify your tape wrap a little bit. Picking those lines up. Okay. We need to get rid of this line right here that goes into the forehead. And it's okay. It doesn't matter where it goes inside of this line. Just as long as you got them converted to fills. Modify, shape, convert fills. So we're going to take all this, we're going to cut it, go to our line art layer, and control shift V, paste in place. And we're going to grab our fill color and we're going to sample our blue color. 
and that's going to change all those to that same color. Okay, so I forgot to delete this little part down here, and since it's the same color, it's going to select everything. But what we can do is with our pointer tool, is we can grab on this corner, and we can pull up and let it snap to the other corner. So we should be able to just select. Well, let's pull this. We got to get we got to get this not touching the rest of it in order for it to select separately. So we'll grab up here and we'll pull down, and since it's separated, we can delete it. There we go. Just a little bit more. We got this ear. It's not a perfect circle. But we're going to use the circle tool on it anyways. We're back on the, uh, the layer that I'm using to make the lines on. There we go. I'll just take this and I'm going to skew it out. Pull it down some. Probably pull it in some. Okay, so now this line kind of comes in, so I'm going to have to pull this down. And then this, actually, I'm going to go against the sketch and pull it in too. And I'm going to get rid of some of this on the side. We'll convert that to a shape, or to a fill. And use the selection tool to just go in. Make sure that it doesn't come out of this other line. That's good. I'm gonna select it, cut it, paste in place on this layer. We'll delete this little tip off here. Change the color to the blue. Okay, let's do these eyes. You know, circle tool. Bring us the circle out. Excuse me. That was a burp. That definitely was a burp. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Pull it up. That's totally gross. I'm sorry. Pull this down. Skew it over. Skew it back. Plus now. I'm going to copy that and then paste it. And then just drag it over so I can use it over here too. You can keep the eyes the same, but um, I'm just going to match this one just a little bit. It's going to make them have different sized eyes, and they're going to look a little weird, but it's okay. Go ahead and get this down here so we can get rid of a few lines. We'll get rid of this hair line here that we never did get rid of. And I can select all these, and it to blue. Okay, we just got a couple more things to do until I'm done with this face. We're gonna make this nose. Over here. Let's see, we'll skew it a little more. It's probably good enough. Cut the bottom out here and here. Like the nose, modify shape, and fertilize the fills. It may seem kind of boring, but if it's well, the first time you do this, it's going to be a little excited. If you're using, if you're used to like hunting for your strokes, and uh, just draw, undo, draw, undo, draw, undo, because there's not a lot of undoing on here. It's just about trying to get it right the first time. There it is. Just pull this up. Can we pull this over? A little bit. Gotta mold that Play-Doh. See, I'm afraid I'm saying things that I've already said in this video because I've already done this video once. I'm afraid I'm gonna be repeating myself too much where I've already recorded this and I have to re-record it, but that, you know, it's fine. Blue. All right, we got a nose. Um, let's do this mouth. See, this mouth, I'm not going to be able to use a whole lot of, um, I'm not going to be able to use the circle tool because it's such an odd shape. So it's going to be a lot of freehandish type of, type of drawing. I'm going to hide my line art layer. That way I can see everything better. 
But with this, we're just going to have to pick our points. Like, like you can see, this goes down. Well, this goes down. This goes around. And then this is a sharp turn. And then it kind of comes up right here. And then back around. And then it finishes off. So I'm going to pick my point here to here. To take this little dip. And then from here to here. Take that big curve. Here to here to take this pretty big swing and then here to here to bend up here to here and then here to here that doesn't look like a mouth at all but we're gonna bend it into one hopefully hopefully eventually you'll be able to look at these and you'll be able to pinpoint where you need your anchors to be it just takes a little practice that's pretty close. We can take, um, you can see like, this is a really straight line right here. And I would like it to be bent a little bit more. But it still comes up to a little pinch right here. Here it is, right here. You can tell because if I pull it, it's gonna pinch it. But it comes to a little pinch right there. You can take and select this little bit and you got a smooth tool here, and it'll smooth your lines out just a little bit. Like right here, it could probably use some smoothing. And it's going to smooth it out as many times as you click it. There's a little point right here. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's a little point right here, and I want to smooth it out too. So there's a mouth, and uh, i got to put these teeth in here. And I don't want to overlap on these lines, so I'm going to go ahead and change these to fills. And change the color. Actually, let's have the color red right now. That way when I come into the line on it, I can delete some lines. I can get rid of this little part of the eyeball, because apparently mouths go over eyes. Okay. So let's take the tooth. We're going to do these teeth from here to here, and then from here to here. We just bend them down. Bend them down. You got that little snail tooth. You can see right here I didn't really get it as far as I wanted to. So I can take my pointer tool and select this part of the line. And when I pull on this, it's not going to pull on the rest of it. So I can pull this over some. Now it looks like it left a kind of a wobbly spot. So let's try seeing if the smooth tool will get rid of that. Oh yeah. And this down here, since it's just a tongue, we'll just do a circle. Huh? Squish it down. And we'll turn it a little bit. Close enough! Okay. We'll go ahead and convert those lines to fills. And we'll cut the little ends off of them. Too much. Get them out of there, put them in here. change that to the dark color let's see all that we have left on the face is the little details and like the ear in, inside the ear the little stray hair and the angry eyebrow gotta get these irises too we'll go ahead and get the irises or the pupils whatever you want to call them delete that line off of them to keep the inside I'll copy paste that so they're the same size. You can move these around with your arrow key, by the way. Um, go ahead and get this eyebrow. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That's a problem. Make sure you don't do that. Lock the layers that you're not working on because you'll accidentally jump into them. Okay. I want to have these lines tapered off on both ends. So we'll select the top, pull it out, 
select this part, pull it in, and that's good. There's the color. We'll do the little stray hair next. Get rid of a little excess at the bottom. Change the color. And the last part is this little ear part. A little inside of the ear. I do want this to taper out at the top. Okay. But I want this bottom line to stay on the inside. Okay, change the colors. And we have the line art for oops. For the face. Like I said before, it looks really uniform. It doesn't have a whole lot of personality in the lines, but it is suited for this like simplish cartoony look where you just want it to look like I don't know. I like the way it looks. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and kind of time lapse the rest of this because it's just using the same techniques over and over and over until we're finished. I'll see you at the end of this one. So there we go, there's the line art. Um, it is probably not time efficient to do it this way. It takes a little longer than it would to freehand it, um, which will be another tutorial I'm gonna do down the line. It's it's a lot like just, you know, freehand inking a uh, anything in like a raster program, only with like a few different type of flash tricks to do the edits, like, uh, like we did here on doing this line tool tutorial thing. Um, in the next tutorial video, I'm going to just do the coloring. It's going to be simple and quick and easy to get to. Uh, the music's by The Fat Rat. You can go listen to more of his stuff at The Fat Rat at facebook.com slash this is the fat rat. The song's called Unity. And uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial when we, when we color this NOS picture. Ah, I'll see you.